Good morning and welcome to The Morning Report. My name is Willie Lawson. The Morning Report is a production of FightBackMedia.com, 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 and FightBackMediaTV.com. Trust that you are well today. Um, It is a, let me look out the window, very sunshiny, a very sunshiny day out there. Now, right here, hmm, could be something different. While Russia's war against Ukraine rages on, as far as we know, and new countries seek to join NATO in response to the Kremlin's aggression, the U.S. Senate voted down an amendment offered by Senator Rand Paul yesterday that would have reasserted Congress's power, not NATO's, to start a war that involved the United States. Now, Senator Paul introduced an amendment to the 2024 National Defense Authorization Act, NDAA is what you're going to hear it called, uh, to make it clear, to reassert, it is, it is the sense of Congress that Article 5 of the North Atlantic Treaty, Treaty uh, does not supersede the constitutional requirement that Congress declare war before the United States engages in war. Now, for those of us who went to public school, what this actually means is that it doesn't matter a tinker's dam what NATO says. It doesn't matter what any world organization says about our involvement in a war. It only matters what Congress says. It only matters what the Constitution says. Now, what this does, if this amendment is part of the 2024 uh, NDAA, it prevents the United States from getting involved in actions around the world that don't have an ending to them. That are these endless wars where we send blood, our blood and treasure that never stop that have been going on for thousands of years that never stop. This stops our involvement. This starts the, um, some people would say, the uh, an isolationist policy. No, what it actually does is reasserts the fact that um, we have been the world's policemen for years and years, and to no avail, to absolutely no avail, none. It's not done as a dog on better good. Now the vote, uh, of 16 to 83, 16 to 83, 83 people in Congress said, in, sen- in the Senate said, no, we're, we're going to reject that amendment. So few that I'm able to tell you the people who voted for it, because I want to stay positive here. Hard to do. Um, people who voted positive in the, in the positive was Braun. Um, from a republic, and let's see, they, and they were all Republicans. Every single one of them. Braun, Indiana, Cruz, Texas, Dames, Montana, Haggerty, Tennessee, Hawley, John Hawley from Missouri, um, Johnson, Wisconsin, um, Kennedy, uh, Louisiana, Lankford, Oklahoma, Lee uh, from Utah, Luminous, from, a Republican from Wyoming. You should have to say Republican, they're all Republicans. Uh, Marshall, uh, from um, Kansas, Paul from Kentucky, Rubio from Florida, Scott from Florida, no, hmm. uh, Schmidt um, from uh, Missouri, uh, Tuberville, coach, Tuberville from Alabama, and Vance from Ohio. Now, I could read the 83 that voted against it, but if your senator voted against this amendment, then that's going to be up to you up to you to talk about it. Up to you, not me, up to you to talk to them about it. I am going to email uh, and maybe call uh, Rick Scott's office to see what the deal is. Now, he'll probably, they'll probably say something like this. Well, this is already guaranteed in the constitution. This, this, this was superfluous. Yes, but it wasn't. It was a reminder. And, you know, everybody needs a reminder from time to time. 
it was a reminder that the United States cannot continue to be involved in these things that go on worldwide forever without congressional approval. That means that the Congress has to be responsible to their to the citizenry, to the electorate, for these continued involvements in these conflicts around the world. This is a reminder. The Senate was not interested, obviously, with a vote of 16 to 83. 83 nays against this amendment. Now, there was nothing in the amendment that um, kept us from protecting ourselves. But Article 5, and this is of, of for NATO, uh, provides for, quote, collective defense among NATO uh, member nations, stating that an armed attack against one or more of them in Europe or North America shall be considered attack against them all which means that it would supersede the Constitution. Signing it, in, 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 you know, agreeing to that in the first place should have been unconstitutional. Yeah. You know, we said this during COVID when people were talking about, you know, vaccinations. Uh, well, we've always done that. Well, yeah, maybe that shouldn't have been the case. Maybe we shouldn't have been doing it all along. Maybe we shouldn't. Maybe just because we've done something all along doesn't mean it was a good idea. And, and our, our, our participation in these world organizations like NATO, maybe that's, not, maybe that's not a good thing because it doesn't benefit us. You know, um, so if the United States gets attacked by, I don't know, Russia and China, uh, so are, are the Belgians going to get just super pissed off and come to our defense? With what? Are the French with what? The Lithuanians with what? <clears throat> we don't benefit. The United States does not benefit by being in these world organizations. They do not. And, and Article 5 here of NATO ought to be incredibly plain to anybody who has two brain cells and a working synapse, that our involvement in, in, in NATO is foolish, ridiculous, useless, and it should be ended. Our, our involvement in the United Nations, same thing. There is no benefit to the United States for participation in these organizations that are mainly funded by the United States taxpayers. So the rest of the world can, can you know, can, can give us the finger. You feel me? Um, North America shall be considered, uh, uh, was, was it the, uh, and Article 5 has been cited as some of the trigger for World War III, given Russia's aggression against Ukraine. Uh, the talking point normally goes like this. If Russia, God forbid, mistakenly or purposely attacks me, a NATO country in Europe, then Article 5 means that NATO and its members would be at war with Russia. But that's not necessarily the case. As Senator Paul noted on the Senate floor Wednesday before the vote, his amendment is consistent with, NATO, with the NATO treaty, while also reasserting that the treaty does not supersede the constitutional requirement for Congress to make the decision of whether or not to go to war. Article 5 of the treaty commits allies to respond to an attack, but allows each ally to determine whether to engage in military hostilities. Paul reminded everybody, Article 11 of the NATO treaty states its provisions are to be carried out by each country's constitutional pro process. He continues, we cannot delegate our responsibility to NATO, nor we are, are we expected to. Okay, so here's the 83 senators said voted no to the amendment. My guess is that a lot of them, not all of them, understood Article 11 that says even, you know, okay, so if somebody attacks one of us, we're all at war. We're all asked to participate. But only asked to participate 
by our own constitutional process. So voting for this amendment does nothing except it maybe it makes maybe it makes the uh the people who are you know in the in the in the business of war a little nervous what people in the business of war yeah there are people who benefit when our war machine is cranking when they're building tanks and bombs and bullets and planes Yes, there's a whole industrial complex that Eisenhower warned us about. You know, when he left the White House. Yeah. And those folks, you know, war is good for business. War is good for business. And war that we're participating in is better for business. And those 83 senators know that because they get their money from a lot of those people. It's interesting. Mike Lee tweeted this. The Senate just rejected Senator Paul's proposal to clarify that Article 5 of the NATO Treaty does not supersede the constitutional requirement that Congress declare war. Treaties can't declare war. Only Congress can do that inexcusable Mike I agree absolutely positively inexcusable absolutely inexcusable we'll be back all righty you know the the ridiculousness of Congress continues and it never ceases to amaze me. Uh, we just talked about how clueless the Senate seems to be. I don't think they are, but they seem to be. But some of these Democrats in the in the House, I really do think they're clueless. I don't think that excuses them from their cluelessness and their danger. But when Democratic Representative um, Kwasi Mufumi, I uh, hope I pronounced that correctly, of Maryland, lambasted Republicans during an over a House Oversight Committee committee where two IRS whistleblowers testified how the Department of Justice interfered with the Hunter Biden investigation. Now, how important is this? Because it's, an, first of all, it's an oversight committee. It's a committee that looks at how government is working and decides, huh, oh, that shouldn't work that way. Let's change that. Let's, oh, or that was good. Let's continue that. It's oversight. So these agencies just don't run amok. That's the deal. Um, he took particular issue with, ta with attacks on the uh, DOJ, FBI, and IRS, claiming that these federal agencies keep this democracy in check. I don't think that that's what is the system of checks and balances. Here's what, he, here's what he continued to say. He says, uh, we're spending our time talking about Hunter Biden, someone who was already pleaded guilty to not filing his taxes, having a gun charge, and now I hear paying for a prostitute, the lawmaker said. Now, here's what galls me. I don't like these attacks on the Department of Justice, the FBI, and the IRS, as if they're somehow anti-U.S. agencies. <laughs> um, these agencies keep the, the, this democracy in check. They provide the checks and they provide the balances. I'm going to try to move out of the way so we can have a quick lesson for the representative on checks and balances. All right, let's see if we can make this work here. Get the chair out of the way. One chair. All right, real quick. If we look, oops, the chair is in the way again. If we look at the, the screen here, we have the three parts of government. On the top, we have the executive branch that enforces the laws. 
They don't make the laws. They enforce the laws. On the bottom, on the bottom left, we have the legislative branch. Well, the lawmakers. Okay. And on the, on the right-hand side, we have the judicial band that judges um, the laws, right? So here's the checks. Let's say the, legis the legislative branch makes a law. The legislative branch is Congress, is, is Congress, the House and the Senate. They send that law to the executive branch. The executive branch says, nah, we don't want to do that. That law goes back to the to the Congress. They can override the veto with two thirds. There you go. They can do that. That's the check and the balances between the legislative and judicial branch. Um, the Senate confirms the judicial appointment, right? And then they and then the courts of judicial branch rules on the legislation basically on the constitutionality of the law. So they have to check each other between the executive and the, um, the judicial. We can see that the executive branch will nominate, nominate a justice. And then that branch of, of the judiciary will rule on executive actions. If something that the people in the executive branch are doing, if it's, if it's okay to do, if it's constitutional, they get to rule on that. So that's how that gets checked. Nowhere in this triangle of checks and balances do you see the Department of Justice. Nowhere in this checks and balances do you see the FBI. Nowhere in this checks and balances do you see the IRS or the EPA or the Department of Energy or the Department of Education, or any other of those ridiculous, useless, expensive um, federal government agencies that um, are making their own rules and making their own laws that the rest of us have to abide by. So just as this time was about to expire, the Democrats snapped, this is ludicrous. Beam me up, Scotty. There's no intelligent life down here. And then he ripped up his remarks in a um, Nancy Pelosi fashion. The only thing that he said was there's no intelligent life here. The only thing he said that was correct. And he's talking about himself. My name is Willie Lawson. Uh, this has been the Morning Report. The Morning Report is a production of fightbackmedia.com. Fightbackmedia.com fightbackmedia.com and fightbackmediatv.com. Until we see you again, go out there and learn something, love somebody, and for goodness sakes, y'all take care of yourself. We will see you when we see you. Bye-bye now.